is give God the glory. That's why we need to be there. We need to be striving to find the Lord in our lives every day of our lives. But that's a powerful, this, this is a powerful verse to me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Because so many times we get caught up in living life and doing what we think we need to do as adults. We, think, we tend to think that we've got to be successful in our career and we can't make enough money. We can't make enough money. Times are hard right now. But I'm here to tell you the only way that we're ever going to get through this life to seek out God. Amen. you got to seek him out. you got to get up as close to him as you can. James, the fourth chapter, verse 8 says, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Amen. I can tell you from experience, if you look for him, he's not hard to find. Because one day, I came home from football practice to an empty house. Everything in it gone. My family gone. That's kind of hard. But you see, when you belong to the Lord, He's going to get your attention. And He's going to bring you back because He loves you. And He had a plan for me. But I wouldn't do it. Wasn't even looking for it. And I was sitting there one night feeling sorry for myself. Knock on the door and I answer the door and a boy that I got to coach a little middle school basketball with plus the fact that he played about the time that I started coaching Knocked on the door. Comes in. Long story short, he gave me this poem. William Shear. For those that just don't know. The title of the poem, Footprints. You know, if you knew William, you knew how strong he was in his faith. You didn't have to wait around long to see it. Bear with me. I'm going to read you this poem. It says, One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life. From each scene, he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him, the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints and in the sand, and he noticed many times along the path of his life there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. And the Lord said that once I decided, and he said, Lord, once, once that I decided to follow you, you said that you'd walk with me always. But I've noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. When I needed you most, you'd leave me. The Lord replied, my precious child, I love you. I'd never leave you. You see, during your times of trials and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, is then I was carrying you. I stopped feeling sorry for myself about that time. Because I looked up for the first time I had myself out of the way all my accomplishments and I could see the Lord 
Sometimes you got to get yourself out of the way to be able to see. And I ask him to straighten that miserable life of mine out. And I told him then that I would do whatever he had for me to do. And it's been hard because the people that knew me before knew what I was about. They didn't know I was about God. They didn't know that I'd been saved because I didn't live like it. All they saw was a foul mouth football coach. And I'm embarrassed to tell you that. Football's kind of an intense sport. If you don't watch, you'll get caught up in it. But I'm going to tell you something else, folks. And you kids need to listen to this big time because I've told my kids this and they're learning now that I knew what I was talking about. Because I've been there. It matters who you hang out with. Amen. You see, my life started reflecting the people that I was hanging with all the time. And I started having the mouth that they had and I started doing some of the things that they did and I kept drifting farther and farther away. Until I had nothing left. <coughs> and I had to come back to the Lord because he's all I had. But the thing about it is, he was all that I ever needed. Oh, man. But I couldn't realize that. So we got to seek out his kingdom. we got to seek him out and seek out his kingdom. <laughs> but along the way, you need to understand that Jesus doesn't want to be anywhere else but first in your life. He wants the first minute of every day of your life. He wants the first hour, the first second. He wants it all. He wants to be first. And I can tell you, it's not going to work for you until he is. Once you put him where he properly deserves to be, life is a whole lot more simple. Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 21st verse. says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What do you have in your life? Think about it. Because if, if the answer is not God, your priorities are wrong. He has to be number one. Because the next verse that I want to talk with you about, Matthew the twenty four the sixth chapter, verse twenty-four, says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You, know, you cannot serve God and mammon. But God's not against you having a good life. And he's not against you having possessions and having things. But if you make the mistake of putting that life before him, then there's a problem. you got to be number one. He deserves to be number one. How many of us could have given our own only son to go die on a cross because of a wicked bunch of people? That's what he did. And I just read you that poem. And if he loves you enough to carry you through all your hard times, when you can't make it by yourself, you, you've got to rely on him. If he's carrying you and he loves you that much, don't you think he deserves to be number one? He does. We often get caught up in life, though, and he's not number one. Everything else around us becomes number one. Our jobs, our families, and, and you need to love your families. That's, that's the thing that's wrong with the world today. There's not enough love in this world. It's mostly about love for self. Nobody else around you, and that's not what the, the Bible teaches you. Simplest, the simplest thing to know about God in this Bible is God is love. And if we're going to call ourselves Christians, to call yourself a Christian means to be Christ-like. So that's a big that's a, that's a that's a big shoes to fill right there. 
but we're to love each other.